Hello everyone. In the previous lesson, we've learned about the intrusive and extrusive landforms associated with volcanoes. We learned that intrusive landforms are landforms which are formed below the Earth's surface, like a sill, dike, laccolith, batholith, isn't it? And intrusive, e extrusive landforms which are formed on the Earth's surface, such as the acid lava. We learned about crater. We learned about caldera and volcanic plug. Today, we are going to do the last portion of the chapter, that is the fragmented or pyroclastic material material thrown out during volcanic eruptions. This is page number 85 from your textbook. So let us begin. Now what are pyroclastic material? The fragmented material thrown out of the volcano during the eruption is known as pyroclastic material or pyroclastic flow. Okay. Now what is a pyroclastic flow? It is a dense fast moving flow of solidified lava pieces ash and hot gases that are ejected when a volcano erupts a pyroclastic flow is so hot it is extremely hot and it can burn anything in its path okay it can move at a speed as high as 200 meter per second now what are the various things that are thrown out from a volcano that consists of pyroclastic material now pyroclastic material consists of volcanic bombs okay so it's a lava which are thrown out okay bigger in size cinder or lapilli these are small fragments of rocks which are ejected from a volcano and scoria scoria are black lava which is ejected from a volcano okay and pumice uh, pumice basically is a very light and porous volcanic rock along with the finer dust so these are various things that uh, a pyroclastic material consists of it consists of bombs it consists of cinder scoria pumice dust dust even ash all right so that is what a pyroclastic material or flow consists of now if the size of the material is small that is four meter or less we call it as lapilli lapilli is basically small fragments of rock if the rock is smaller we call it as lapilli but if the size of the rock is bigger six millimeter more we call it as volcanic bomb okay so that is the difference between lapilli and volcanic bomb one is smaller in size and one is bigger all right so that is what is about the frag uh, pyroclastic material that are ejected and what does the various materials that are ejected in the pyroclastic flow moving to the next hot springs and geysers now first reason why we're learning about hot springs and geysers in this chapter on volcanoes bad Vol uh, hot springs and geysers are mostly associated with areas uh, of volcanoes okay where movement of plates takes place so hot springs and geysers let's try to understand the difference between the two now hot springs and geysers please underline are related to the emission of hot water from the earth's surface so when hot water from the earth's surface as we all know water is stored underground isn't it if you look into this picture this is say water which is stored underground which is also known as underground water now when this underground water gets heated when it comes in contact with the hot rocks below so this water which is stored underground when it comes in contact with the hot rock the water starts heating up okay gets heated now what happens the superheated water gets converted into steam so this water is converted into steam since steam requires more space so it pushes up the warm water towards the surface so if you look at the picture how steam is being pushed up because now the water is converted to steam because of because it has been heated due to contact with the hot rocks okay so in the case of hot spring what happens the force of water coming out is less so when water just comes out on the surface that is a hot spring okay it just comes on the surface and it flows on the surface but the force of hot water coming out is more in the case of geysers hot water is ejected up to height of 40 meter but the force of water is so much that it just flows out and it flows reaching height of almost 40 meter that is what is known as a geyser so that is the difference between geyser and hot spring both the process of formation is same because of the underground water being heated up because of contact with the hot rock and how steam requires more space so say they so they start pushing upwards when they push upwards and then when they come on the surface in a smooth manner and just starts depositing on the surface that is how hot springs are formed but for geyser the force of the water is so much that you know it can the water is just ejected out like a fountain you know reaching up to 40 meter and this is very popular in the Yellowstone National Park in United States where you see geysers and that attracts a lot of tourists right so that is the difference between hot springs and geysers moving to the distribution of volcanoes now where are volcanoes formed anytime we always 
think of volcanoes and earthquakes are mostly associated with regions of intense folding and faulting. We've already learned what is folding and faulting. When two plates move towards each other, they float they fold okay so that is folding when one subducts below another that is a faulting which leads to crack so plate margins are boundaries where two plates meet or where two mates uh, two plates separate this uh, you know diverge from each other so volcanoes are mostly associated in plate margins or areas of young fold mountains and most this is important most of the volcanoes almost more than 60 like 75 percent of the volcanoes are found in the circum pacific region which is known as Pacific Ring of Fire. So this is important. Circum Pacific region is one very important region where you see more than 70% of volcanoes, active volcanoes, uh, you know, dormant volcanoes, you know, in this region. That is why we call it as Pacific Ring of Fire because 60% of the world volcanoes are found here. Uh, now, if you have to be very specific about the Circum Pacific, you see Aleutian Islands in Alaska, talk about Japan, New Zealand, all right. Even many dormant and extinct volcanoes are found along the coast of Atlantic Ocean, all right. Active volcanoes are found in Iceland. You have learned about Mount Stromboli, Etna. These are all found in the Mediterranean region, and Andaman and Nicobar also have a barren island, all right. If you remember, we learned about this. So that, those are your various regions where you know volcanoes are distributed in the world and the most important being a circum pacific region because uh, it's more than 60% of the volcanoes are found here that is why they are known as pacific ring of fire. So that is about the distribution of volcanoes and moving to the last goal for today's class advantages of volcano. Advantages of volcano is also known as constructive so constructive effects of volcano meaning advantages of volcano volcanoes have many advantages we'll start with the first advantage the denudation meaning a weathering so when volcanic rocks break down they provide us with black soil which is also known as rigor soil and when one very good example is the Deccan Plateau of India which has very rich deposits of black soil so volcano provides us with rich fertile soil such as black soil rich in iron and is very favorable for the growth of cotton Second, you see deposits of precious materials such when metals and stones such as gold and copper are also deposited in areas associated with volcanoes. So that is the second constructive effects of volcanoes are advantages that we even derive a lot of precious metals and stones from the volcano. Third, areas of hot springs and geysers are you know, attract a lot of tourists. So tourists popular for attracting a lot of tourists like Yellowstone National Park, Iceland, okay, these are areas. And the last effect of volcano is that hot springs may contain sulfur, which is has great medicinal value. I'm sure you've noticed or you've gone yourself how it is believed that, you know, hot springs contain sulfur, which is very beneficial for body and, you know, benefiting us from, you know, uh, various medicinal properties being associated with hot springs. So that can be the major uh, advantages of volcanoes. So those are, yes, advantages of volcanoes from uh, fertile soil to precious stones to attracting tourists and beneficial for health. And the last portion is the disadvantages. Disadvantages meaning your destructive effects. Okay, so let's learn about the destructive effects of volcano. Definitely, the first destructive effect is that loss of life and property. As we all know, when volcano erupts, especially with pyroclastic flow or hot magma being ejected, people could be moved and it can lead a lot of damage of life and property. Second, the large-scale accumulation of ash and smoke in the sky can affect air transport. So that can, you know, block the flow of uh, movement of air, airways in, in, uh, in the atmosphere. So air transport could be blocked. Third advantage, disadvantage is that the lava that flows out on the surface and then solidifies may render. May render means provide the land to be permanently unusable for farming. Sometimes when, especially in cases of active volcano, when lava keeps on, you know, is being ejected out and lava cools down, becomes solid. Again, accumulation of constant lava leads to, you know, uh, land being permanently unusable for farming practices because this you know pile of solidified lava that has been accumulated so that can be a drawback for encouraging people to undergo any kind of farming activities fourth the violent and explosive uh, volcanic eruption can cause localized meaning something related or pertaining to that area severe earthquake these are cases where volcanoes the you know the the volcanoes erupting at a really massive scale with 
pyroclastic flow uh, that can lead to some kind of tremors when volcano ejects out especially these are associated with active volcanoes so when the ejection part when volcano erupts with a massive and a very powerful um, you know scale that can lead to movement lo localized earthquake and the last one being undersea volcanic eruption can not only destroy the flora but can also be dangerous to uh, leading to tsunamis also so these are some of the destructive effects of volcanoes so in today's lesson we've learned about pyroclastic flow material the various materials that consists of like a cinder volcanic bomb scoria isn't it we learned about what are hot springs and geysers and how are they different from each other we learned about the distribution of volcano and then we learned about the constructive and destructive effects of volcano that is the advantages and disadvantages of volcano now i'll just show you some pictures to help you understand and connect to the lesson better so this are this is a distribution of Pacific Ring of Fire. How you see it's from Japan, okay, New Zealand. Now you see um, your areas of Rockies. All right. So these are all areas which are associated with volcanoes. More than sixty percent. That is why they are known as Ring of Fire. Um, this is a picture of pyroclastic flow. Like I told you, it is a very dense and fast moving flow of solidified lava pieces volcanic ash and hot gases okay it is extremely hot this is a pyroclastic flow it is extremely hot burning anything in its path and it can move at a speed as high as 200 meter per second this is how you know it can damage life property all right so that is a pyroclastic flow this is your lapilli which i told you which is also ejected out and it's part of pyroclastic flow but there are smaller rocks okay the smaller rock fragments ejected out lapilli or cinder this is your scoria like i told you these are a little bigger than lapilli uh, they're black color they're black lava ejected from a volcano this is a pumice which is a very light and porous volcanic rock like you can see porous meaning it is very it is penetrable okay water can easily seep in because it has a lot of spaces pores okay so which we, we all even use it in our day-to-day -day life your pumice stone all right this is the hot springs which can attract a lot of tourists in Iceland. This is a picture from Iceland. This is a geyser where we you know steam just gets ejected like a fountain. Um, this is Yellowstone National Park. So that is about today's class. If you have any questions, concerns, please feel free to get back. Thank you.